plate. Uh, let me just share the screen. So up here. So again, just to review, if you would like to ask a question, you go down to where it says two in the chat. Then you choose individual user. Then you choose Melissa Armo. That's how you will type a question. I'm the only one talking. Everyone's mics are off and webcams. You're listening to me and you should see a chart of Amazon right now. Can everybody see it? Does everyone know how to type in the chat? Hello. Can everybody hear me? There's one person. We got one yes. Actually, let's pull up the market. So today I'm just doing a, oh, there's Rick. He can hear me. Today I'm doing kind of a free for all lecture, which actually is perfect timing <laughs> because of the sell off that we had this afternoon. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about momentum. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo. I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh, and I teach a method on gaps in a course once a month. I also run a live trading room, and uh, in, in that room we do trades that are based on gaps, but they're really based on momentum, okay? So why is this good timing here to discuss momentum today? Because we had momentum into the close today, pretty much started around three o'clock into the close, and now we are selling off here tonight after hours. So we're gonna talk about gaps, we're gonna talk about momentum. If you have questions, you can plop it in the room. So this is a free for all lecture. I know some people are here that have heard me speak before. Some people are new that have not heard me speak before. Sometimes I give prepared lectures or webinars where I'm talking about what I do to see if people have an interest to come and learn from me and learn my structured system. So my system is very structured in the sense that I prepare what I like and want to trade in the morning in the pre-market based on looking at what's happening in the gap. So if those of you that don't know what a gap is, a gap is the difference between the close and the open. So right now, if you would pretend tomorrow morning was 9.30 in the morning, we'd be gapping down. Why? Because we closed at 3.03.30 and we are now down from the close, which was 3.03.30. We're trading at 3.03.10, 3.03.11, 3.03.12. So we'd be down if tomorrow was 9.30. Now, again, will we be down tomorrow? It's too far away. No one knows. Most likely we will be down tomorrow. So we will probably see some selling into tomorrow morning based off of the news that created the selling from 3 to 4 which was these big fat red bars that you're seeing here in the 15 minute chart. So ironically, this morning I was talking about the market and we had a number, we had an economic number and the market opened lower this morning and then it rallied and I said the Fed, what could spawn a sell off in this market is that the Fed could decide to raise rates in March a half a point, not a quarter. Because inflation, as you well know, if you follow fundamentals, if you like that stuff, inflation is not coming down fast enough. So we're down a little bit since, you know, six months ago, but we didn't have a good number this morning for inflation, we ticked up. So from December, we fell a little bit. Then from January, we ticked up. But again, we're really not gonna get to the 2% level of inflation that the Fed's target point is by the end of this 12 month period if they only do quarter point hikes. I think that that was evident before today uh, but it's surely evident in my mind by, by now. Um, and some of you were in the room this morning and you heard me say that. I sent an email out about a half an hour ago. So it's kind of, kind of ironic that I did anticipate that. I didn't know that they would make a statement today about it. But that's what created the sell-off. So again, I look at the gap and then I tried to determine do I want to go long the gap or do I want to short the gap, okay? So what is a gap? A gap could be a bullish gap or a bearish gap. And again, for those of you that don't know me, I prefer to short. Those of you that are familiar with what I do, I short, okay? Sometimes I will go long. Now, if you wanted to go long today, a bullish gap, the play was Cisco. We did not do this. We did not do this. It did work, okay? But anyways, let's just go over again what a gap is here briefly. The close on yesterday 
was 48.45, and Cisco gapped up today and opened at 49.99. Ran up, had a nice move, had a good move, didn't catch it out of the gate, and it went, okay? Now, again, Cisco is a market stock. Is this the reason the market rallied initially today? I don't know, maybe. Hard to believe that one stock like that could move the market, but maybe that helped the market move up today before the crash, again, which happened very, very late. So in fact, it was exactly at three o'clock. Here's the move down. So prior to this three o'clock sell-off, we were actually green on the day. Green on the day, the market got bought on support. Everybody with me so far? Am I making any sense? Now, as far as momentum goes, what is the benefit, somebody, anybody, what's the benefit of trading momentum? Daryl, you're there, I see you writing. What's the benefit of trading momentum and why am I constantly looking for momentum? As an individual trader, as one person, me, you, everybody here, what's the benefit of trading momentum? Or anybody? Daryl answered, go with the flow, volume. Andrew's saying high probability of success. Well, if that's if you get the direction. That's if you get the direction right. <laughs> so you have to get the, you still have to get the direction right. So you'll have a high probability of success as long as the direction's right with momentum. So all of you are sort of getting it, but nobody's really said what I'm thinking yet. Trend is your friend. But what's the benefit of momentum trading? What's the benefit? Again, this is whether you go long or whether you short. Again, I prefer to short. But what's the real, 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 real benefit of momentum trading? Any other takers? Well, you'll gain money whether you, if you get the right direction right in a trade, no matter, no matter if you have momentum or not. Kirti, I'm not sure if I pronounce your name right. Todd saying volume. All of you are giving good answers, but it's not what I'm thinking. Institutional money. Okay. So what is momentum? It's a big move. Okay. And again, this is just great timing here. So I'm going to blow it up. Actually, let's blow up the one minute. Does everybody see that? This is just great timing because we had a big sell-off that had mo big momentum to the downside from three o'clock into the close. So what's the benefit of momentum trading is you can get a large move. Now just listen to me. A large move, a big move. Again, it could be up or down. Today we're talking about shorts because I do prefer to short and my bearish gap class is next weekend. So, and, and the sell-off that happened in the market here was to the downside. So we're going to talk about shorting. But what's the benefit of momentum is that you get big moves with small entries, okay? So the whole benefit is that you can get a very, 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 very large move with a, with a, with a relatively small entry, okay? I mean, if you wanna just take a swing trade, for example, and just say, I'm going to go long the market and hold it for the next 10 years. And, and you could get a move and a large move to the upside. That would be a wide stop, a big stop. It would take a long time. Momentum trading is quick, fast trades with small stops that happens big. Okay. So by momentum, we mean big and we mean fast. Okay. And we mean tight entries, tight meaning something that you can take as a day trade and have a large risk to reward. Okay, again, because otherwise you can't really call it momentum. Like if you said, well, I'm, I'm going to buy Apple and I think it's going to go to, you know, 350 by 2027. That's, that's not momentum trading. You know, yeah, that would be a great trade where you'd be up money if you bought Apple today and it went to that number between now and 2027. But that's, that's, that's not what we're talking about here. Okay. So it's got to be a large move, a fast move that you can capitalize on, whether it's as a day trade, whether it's as a swing trade, if you want to do swing trades, or whether it's what you want to do as an option. It's the idea that it happens quickly, fast, 
Momentum, if you're capturing it in the right direction, can come in very, very fast. Cisco was a bullish momentum move today. If you hit it quick out of the gate and got in and got out, it fell then later in the afternoon with the market, and it could be lower tomorrow with the market too if the market falls. So the idea is the speed of it. And then in, in, in order to capture that, you need the speed of execution. Because if you're getting it late, it's just too darn late, okay? If you get a good entry with a small stop, you can have big profit, yes. Okay? Any questions here about what I'm saying? So let's just look at it. So anyways, this is this. This is the market where we were prior to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. In fact, let's just find 3 on the dot. So at 3 on the dot in the afternoon here, we were roughly around 307 and 33. So we fell, and this is what I mean by momentum, people. Just follow my arrow here, 3 o'clock. Let's take it down. We fell $4 plus. Now you could, and again, whether you held that for the whole hour or not, $4 is a big move and a momentum move, even if you didn't hold it for the whole hour. If you hit it here at 3 o'clock, saw we were starting to break off. I did capture this, this move actually in Amazon as a quick last-minute day trade, but this was right here, snug as a bug, around 3.07 in the 30s. Even if you just got in and out of it in 15 minutes, in the drop in here, you could have got $2. $3, $4. So if you get a move like this, the nice thing about trading, again, big momentum, is whether you get in and out quick or hold it for a squeeze, tidgen, bit of a more, whether it's for 15 minutes, five minutes, a half an hour, an hour like this, since you could have held into the close, either way, it's the idea that you have more choices as far as where you're going to get out because you have such a good entry right at the top in a short or right at the low and along before the momentum occurs. So that's the whole idea of getting in before the momentum occurs. And actually we were in trades that I called that were puts before this momentum occurs, occurred. So that it was a good call. It was, I had a good read on the market today. It took longer than I thought to drop. It is kind of interesting how my, 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 rationale though this morning was that we could end up having a half point rate hike i don't know i sort of feel like i was a little psychic about that this morning because we were completely 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 green on the day i mean the high in the day was all the way up here at 308.43 and we broke totally broke off and closed red which was a really nice sell off here under the close so this was momentum now let's look at another stock again there's a million things we could look at Amazon. No, actually, let's look at um, let's look at D D V. No, let's look at uh, that wasn't the one I meant. D V N. That was the one we did the other day. D V N. Here's another one. We did this yesterday. Yesterday in the live trading room. So again, let's just take a look at it. Stock closed here, sixty three ninety four. Boom. Open in the morning at fifty eight eighty five. So this closed here, gap down. Okay, dropped. So from temp to tail, the high was 59.17, low was 55.40. So you say, what is that? It's about $4 plus. That's, that's good move, people. And again, this is a short. So I looked at this in the morning. This is a good gap. It rated good per my system, too short. We did it. Actually, we did a late trade in this. But again, I'm going to blow up the one. Actually, we got to go back. Yesterday was the 15th. That was today. And any questions, write it in the room. Was yesterday? What was yesterday? Here. Yesterday was 2.15. There. So again, beautiful move. Here's where we capture the rally. We had perfect timing here under this drop. So again, it doesn't even have to take that long. So it, momentum is fast, quick big. And again, what's the benefit that you as one individual trader can get a large risk to reward or return on investment if you do an option in a trade with a small stop and get a big move. Sizing yourself accurately is important too. You have to have the consistency. But again, it's the idea of getting what I call the money move. Okay. 
So it's momentum. This is momentum. This is momentum to the downside, but this is the money move in the stock of the day. It had one and two. And again, you could have done this later as well. But these are the things that I'm looking for to capture each and every single morning when I'm doing the trades. But this was, this was good. We did not do an option in this. I didn't even look up if there are options in this. This isn't something I play as an option. But we did a day trade in this in the live run. So again, how much of a move is this? Okay, roughly around 58, 57 and change. Down in here, a buck, buck and a half. That's good enough. That's good enough as a day trader to make money. Now, let me look at the other one. We did ACAM yesterday. This fell today to 215. I actually killed this and stuck with the DBN, but this worked. So let me just show you this one too. This was 215 as well. Here it is. Now let me blow it up. Again, stock closed up here the night before, 87.78. Open in the morning, 81.44. Boom. Here's the momentum. Get the drop. Okay. Any questions here while I'm talking about this? So the benefits of trading momentum, if you're an active trader, and by active I mean you're in the market every day. You're not buying for long-term uh, you know, positions. You're not, this isn't like I'm buying a stock in my IRA and I'm holding it for five to 10 years. Momentum trading, active trading, is you're in and out in several minutes or several hours, or if you're doing an option, it's a couple of days. If I take an option on a Monday and I get out on a Wednesday, that's still fast to me, okay? We're doing options that are weeklies, same concept, okay, where it's quick, super duper quick. And one, two, three days is still fast to take a trade to capture a move overnight. So we are in puts now, we are in puts. They could be up very nicely tomorrow morning if we're down. Again, they're already going in our favor because the market is down tonight. Anyone want to ask me any specific questions about day trades or options or the market before I say what I was going to say next here? Joanna, I just saw you sign in. Any specific questions about anything I just talked about before I go to the next thing I wanted to say? Everybody with me so far? Hello? Anybody there? Andrew's there. Andrew did the Amazon. I got your email. Daryl's there. Daryl, did you do Amazon? Some people do the option. Okay. So... What are we on here, the cues? Anyways, if you look at this, okay, the tricky thing that tricks people up about the market, the really, 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 really tricky thing that trips people up, well, pretty much all of last year and even the beginning of this year too, is people are reading, someone earlier said trade the trend, People are reading things in a certain way and they're saying, yes, this is going to happen and this is going to happen. This is going to happen and this is going to happen. And they're reading things in a certain way and then, then it doesn't seem to go in their favor and then it doesn't seem to make sense and then everything is confusing and that's where people get all tripped up, okay? So... What happens in that type of environment is what we've been dealing with pretty much for the most of this year, 2020, 2023, but also 2022, okay? So there are many, 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 many chances for the market to rally and go back up to the highs in 2022. The market did not do that, as you well know, okay? The last time the market, and again, I'm looking at the cues. I could be looking at a million different things here, but I just have the cues up. The last time the QQQs made a brand new all-time high was 11.22, 2021. We're in 2023 now, people. So, but there were many chances for the market to recover, go up, go over the highs, do whatever it needed to do, and it failed to do that. Now, people have, again, I appear on television, 
and I listened with other people say and I kind of chuckled because a lot of people have been very bullish on the market for 2023 very 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 bullish why because we had a rally to start out the year but as you can see we're nowhere near the highs now does that mean that we're not going to go back up to the highs between now and the end of the year no not necessarily i don't know that but the beautiful thing about the type of trading i do specifically is i don't care so if you're constantly trying to predict where the market's going to be june 1st july 1st september 2023 you know that has nothing to do with active trading where you're trying to make money in the market every single day that has nothing to do with retail trading where you're in and out of fast trades it has nothing to do with momentum trading or anything else like that truth be told the market is actually in an uptrend it never broke the uptrend for me the way that i qualify things the way that i rank gaps the way that i look at trends the market is in an uptrend and never broke the trend not even last year and not even when we sold off however i did do puts in the market last year and made money and you say well how is that possible because you can get momentum against the trend all over the place every day of the week so sometimes yeah i might be with the trend but sometimes i'm not but i still can make money because i'm trading momentum and all i care about is what's happening right now in the trade that i take getting the best entry i can getting the direction right and getting a big move as fast as i can do you understand what i'm saying so to try to predict where we're going to be six months from now three months from now 30 days from now or a year from now is pointless it's a fun conversation at a dinner party if you want to have a cocktail hour it is not going to make you any money it's not going to make you any money at all so if you're focused to the task at hand which is to try to make money today like you're trying to hit a bullseye every single day you're going to be a lot better off than trying to predict where we go six months from now three months from now do we have a recession what's the fed going to do blah 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 uh, there's something else I was going to say now. I just forgot. Andrew, I forgot about that. I have to look and see about that. I will I will look at that later for you. I did do an options lecture for students on Monday night. Some people came, some people missed it. Okay, any, any other questions about what I'm talking about here, what I was just saying before I finish some other thoughts? Some people that are in here, I don't recognize, I don't know you. Again, if you're new, you go down to two, pick individual user, pick my name, Melissa Armo. That's how you will type a question in the chat. Anyone have any questions before I keep talking here? I just don't want to keep talking if somebody wants to ask something specific. Not yet, okay. So the takeaways from what I'm trying to tell people is, do not get so um, bogged down, I guess is the best word. Do not get so bogged down into trying to predict the future because you're gonna get killed in this type of market if that's what you're trying to do so that was the case for 2022 for a lot of traders and it for sure as heck fire is the case for 2023 my brain works very fast and my goal is always to make money as fast as i can one of the reasons i like to do that is because i just think it's a lot less stressful and if somebody said to you that you can make a thousand dollars working six and a half hours a day or a thousand dollars working five minutes a day what would you choose five minutes it's like a no-brainer okay so it's really about finding the momentum so we can get the fast move which is something that i'm very very focused on and therefore then i don't have to worry about trying to predict the future which you're not going to be able to do anyways far off Again, think about it. You know, could anyone have predicted COVID? No. Could anyone have predicted that Biden and Trump would be running for president in 2024? Because that's probably what it's going to be. 
No one else is going to beat Trump out for the Republican nomination, and Biden's going to announce he's running any day. Could you have predicted that? Hell no. I can't even, I still can't even believe it. It's really, quite frankly, ridiculous. But the fact is, like, that's what it's going to be. So trying to predict the future is just, you know, it's, it's not going to serve you as an individual trader. If you're someone that invests money in your retirement account, or if you have a retirement account, or even if you trade your retirement account, say you have an IRA, you can do fast trades in your IRA, but your brain has to work differently because these are not long-term trades. Like when we're doing options, if you want to trade your IRA and do options, if they're still fast trades, you're not, this isn't long-term investing. Okay, so you have to switch your brain and go boom and put it on the speed of fast trading so that you can make money in the market because people are getting chopped up because they're saying, oh, I'm going to go long here in January. This is the low for the year. The market's recovered. It set the low in the January. We're going to rally. We're have the recovery this year. Do, 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 do. And you see how that's just like, it's, it, you could be up for the year if you did that. If you bought the first week of January, you're up for the year. We're not, we're, we're, we're not where we started for the year. We'll look at it in a minute. But the point is, who cares? That's really not what an active trader does. That's not what I'm trying to do. And you will not do well if you're thinking like that and trying to pull money out of the market on a consistent basis. Because long-term investing, while it's something that you could do, should be something that you'd almost do in a separate account and you really, you should, you should definitely manage your money differently as far as your risk, the amount of size you put on, the picks, that kind of stuff. That's not what active trading is. And I think a lot of traders confuse that. Sometimes they buy stocks for dividends. Sometimes they buy them because they love them and they say, well, this stock isn't going to go out of business like Apple, but they shouldn't be buying it where they buy it. And then they, then they're down and they have to kill the trade with a loss. Like it's just a, this is a different type of trading. Again, momentum trading is the, one of the best ways I can describe it. It's based on the gap. Everything I do is based on the gap. But the reality is it's the fast, quick move. And as soon as you get your, turn your brain onto that switch, you'll do a lot better. And then you won't get tripped up, particularly like, like the last week. And then you won't be surprised when we have a sell-off like we did today. And we probably will tomorrow. We'll see where we open. I don't use any of those things, key RT, but if they worked in a consistent basis, nobody would lose any money. So those are not, any, any indicators are not foolproof and don't consistently work to make trading choices. Why? Simply because of what, what I was just talking about earlier, the gap itself, okay? So you may have an indicator that says, this crisscrosses here and this is a great place to go long and it doesn't work. Why? Because of the gap. Because of many other factors. You can't just buy on every move and average or short of resistance and buy in support. It does not work consistently. Sometimes it does. In markets where it is power trending, something like that may work. When was that? 2021. So you could have bought support in 2021. The market power trended up. It was an anomaly. This doesn't happen many years. By power trend, I mean a power trend up or down. We did not power trend down in 2022, okay? This was a power trend really for the year. And again, I think that is also what's skewing people looking at 2023 because we almost went straight up there. Almost went straight up there. No, it's not as simple as that either. Again, gap fills don't work. Do sometimes gaps reverse? Yes. Sometimes, but sometimes anything anything works. That doesn't mean you should do it consistently. How do you make money in the market? You have to have a consistent strategy to apply every single solitary day or you're going to lose. Because sometimes you can do anything. Sometimes you can buy a meme stock, a Reddit stock, and make a lot of money. But most of the ones you do, you'll lose. Sometimes I can cross the street on a busy traffic day, even though the light is red. Should I do it? No. Sometimes I can make it across and there isn't any traffic. Should I do it? Hell no. Cars and taxis come around way too fast and make the corner, and sometimes you can't even see them. I should never ever cross the light unless it's green, and I don't. So the reality is sometimes anything works. If you want to be successful in this business for longevity, like you want to do this and you're serious about it and you want to do it not just for a week, not just for a month, for the next 10 years of your life or 15 years that I've been doing this, you need to be consistent with what you do, and you have to have a method of application to apply each and every pick of your trade consistently in order to make money. It's got to work more than it loses. 
That's the only way you're going to make money. And if it were that easy to just use an indicator to make trading decisions, no one would ever lose. This is like common sense 101. Okay. Now let's go back to the beginning of the year. Where was I? Well, this is very interesting. So here we go. That's the year. I mean, the beginning of the year. Day one, one, three. So what happened? Everyone's been yapping, yapping, yapping about January, which we did have a rally. I'm not going to deny we had a rally in the month of January. I did not go long the market. Not one single solitary day. Not even for a day trade, did I? I didn't like the setups. But anyways, we started out the year in a gap up. And guess what happened? It failed. <laughs> That's what happened. So this to me is not what I consider a bullish start to the year. Now that I'm looking at that there. Didn't even notice that till now. Now, I am not making predictions about where the market goes between now and 1231. I don't care, okay? I'm talking here about how you have to look in the moment and live in the moment of each and every day. Looking and reading what's happening every morning like this is the first day of your life and you trade in that moment in the momentum, finding the best pick that has the momentum. Again, I prefer to short, but I will go long. And you get in and out. And you get in and out. And that's it. But that is interesting here that I just noticed. Day one. Same thing here in the spy. Let's quickly look at the banks since they talked about interest rates here. Because I didn't peek at those since that news came out. Let's look at Goldman. Let's look at JPM. Okay. Let's look at this one here. Just looking at some leading banks here to make some looks. Okay, any questions about what I was just saying? So what's hard for people is, and by people I mean just regular people to trade, is the, is the consistency. It is a consistency. <laughs> I mean... You know, they're, they're doing something, it works, it works, it works, then it loses, loses, loses. Then they, then they quit that thing, then they try something else. Then it works, it works, it works, then it loses, loses, loses. Then they quit that thing, then they try something else. If you don't stick with something, you're never going to get good at it. Of course, you've got to find something that works. You are, you are going to have losses if you come trade with me. There are trades that I take that lose. But at the end of the day, if you size yourself correctly, you'll have more winners and losers with me. If you follow what I do, that's the whole point. I mean, I wish that no trade I ever took lost. I took an early trade in Amazon today. I got stopped, and I was up a good good amount of money. I didn't get out. So I was a little, you know, I had stars in my eyes about the target in that Amazon this morning. But, man, was I right. I was right. And I got a late trade in it then. Any questions here about anything so far that I've talked about? So momentum is important. It allows you to make a lot of money with a small size. You can get the fast trades where you don't have to worry about what the Fed's saying. You can get in and out in several minutes. What about options? Yes, you can do options overnight. Yes, you could be in trades and hold them overnight. No one said you have to hold them for days. If you're up and want to scalp options, you can do that too. The market's been sideways. The market's been tricky. If you want to get out with quick profits and options, some of you are doing that. I know some of you are doing that. I don't have a problem with that. Usually I try to hold things for a good move. That has meant that some trades I've taken losses in that were up. That's my personal choice, my money management. You can do it differently. You can day trade options if you want. Boom, get in, get out. And I know some of you are doing that if that's what you want to do. But then you're not going to capture the overnight move. So again, I called some puts today. If you got out of them before the close and we're down tomorrow, you're not going to get the big move. If you book money, that's fine. That's the chance you take. Any questions about anything here that I've been talking about so far? So again, let's review what a gap is. Right now, the market's gapping down. I'm looking at the QQQs. We closed at 303.30. Where are we now? We broke 303. We're down 32 cents. That's not a million miles, but tomorrow's a long way away. Where would I love to see the market tomorrow? Down, big, a lot. But then again, what if it's on support? Are people going to buy it? See, that's what's been happening a lot. You have to buy the dippers that come in, and they keep buying the support, but then it doesn't hold. So you see why you shouldn't do it anyways? 
So sometimes, as crazy as it seems, I'm getting in trades, could be the market, could be Amazon, could be anything at all, that seem like they don't make any sense. And they could be down before they go, but then they go and then they go big. But that's the beauty of knowing what to do and understanding what to do and really just getting the logic part of it, which is again, is what I teach in my big class that's you know 16 hours. So we're just doing an introduction tonight where I'm talking about gaps, momentum, the market, and any questions that anyone may have. I don't know what the market does tomorrow. If I, if I looked at probabilities, I'd say we most likely will be down in the morning. But whether or not we fall will depend on where we open, how the gap rates, and all those things. But if you're in an overnight trade, and again, this is the benefit of doing options, and I'm just making this up. You know, if you're in an overnight, I'm just going to throw a number out there. If sometime between 3 and 4 o'clock today, you did a 300 put in the queues, and we open at 300 at the strike tomorrow, it, what does it matter if we rally tomorrow? You get out into the open, bing, bang, boom. You're, you would be up. You would be up nicely. Do you follow me? Because you got the timing right, you got the momentum right, you got the direction right, and you'd be up as soon as we open. So that's a way to play it when that happens if you decide to come and do the options newsletter with me. You don't have to think hard. You just, you're up a lot. When you get up, you get out. Bob, I see you here. That is something that you, you have struggled with because you don't understand what I'm doing. Bob, are you there? Boom, boom, I see you. Do you know how to type? You go down to two, individual user, and pick my name. John, are you still trading? You were in the room last year. I don't know what you're doing. Are you trading on your own, or what are you up to? I don't know if you're going to come back to the room or what you're doing. Tim A, I see you. I don't know if you're ever going to join. I've been talking to you for months. John, are you there? So everybody know how to chat. You go to two, then you do individual user, then you pick my name, Melissa Armo. Tax season is now, that's true. Bob, I think you've been trading for so many years that in your head, you have a set thing. It's not working for you, but then when you, when you try to do a trade that I'm doing, somehow in your head, it works against you. It works against you, Bob. You're like, oh, I think I should do this because I did this for 52 years, but Melissa's doing this. I think that's what you're doing. I could be wrong, but again, you know, I'm somebody that when I started out trading, I didn't know anything about trading. That really worked in my favor. So when I started out, I didn't know anything at all about anything at all. And that worked in my favor because I didn't have any preconceived notions I didn't have any preconceived bad habits. So that actually worked in my favor. Do you know what I mean? I never traded any strategy. I just took a class. I learned basic technical analysis skills. And then I ended up creating my own system. So that worked in my favor because I really didn't have any set way that I was looking at things like using indicators and all that stuff that people do that really got into my head. Do you know what I mean? But when I started, I lost money because I didn't know I was doing it. It took me three years to figure out my system, but I didn't have any bad, like, pre-programmed ways of looking at things. Now, when I started training and I got into it, I did have some bad habits that I had to break. One of those habits was after I took a trade in the morning, after I made money quickly, then I, and, if I, and if I did, like, make money in five minutes, I think I could trade all day. And, and, that, and that was a bad habit. I realized very quickly that my job was to make money and stop. And that was something that it took me really a long time to just get into that, into, to break that habit of wanting to trade all day, thinking more and more and more. It's not like that. You have one job, you go in, you take one trade, maybe two, that's it, you're done, boom. Because it's, you know, to hit a bullseye for six and a half hours, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's not likely. So it was, a, it was, for me, it was then the bad habits of changing the programming of understanding really what this was and that my goal was to hit the bullseye. And as soon as I had done that, I was good, you know. Uh, somebody's asked, okay, Daryl has to go. That's fine. 
Steve is asking, what was I looking at to see the downward move? I didn't, I didn't know that we'd sell off from three to four. I, I knew we were going to sell off. I did not know it was going to be from three to four. I thought it was going to be this morning. It wasn't. That's my whole point. So that's the bugaboo. So that's what I was saying earlier. We did Amazon and I was in it and I was up. And then it flipped and I got stopped. And then I retook it later in the day. So I, I predicted the move would be to the downside, Steve, today. I was right, but it didn't happen as fast as I thought. Then I had to take another trade in this to get the sell off. Did I know it'd be at three o'clock? No. I was watching it because it was an options. And the options I did, I did in the morning too. And they reversed against me, but they don't expire till next week. So again, reality is that sometimes things don't happen exactly when you want them to. But as long as you get the, the direction right, where the momentum's going, you're going to make money. So I did not know we'd sell off from three to four, but it is kind of, I mean, it is almost like twilight zone -y that I did have a discussion for one hour today in the room about the inflation number and that I thought that they might raise rates a half a point after this. And then all of a sudden that news came out today. Like, I don't think that was a hard prediction, but based on the way that people have been talking on TV about the Fed for the last six weeks that everyone thinks they're going to back off rates, which the Fed has never said. <coughs> so they haven't said that once, but we've had a rally in January because everyone was saying they were going to do it, even though they never said they were going to do it. So, I mean, that's what I was talking about earlier, where I was like, oh, you know, we, I didn't think that the Fed would make a statement about that today. No, but I did predict the direction was down. I did take trades accordingly. I got stopped in the Amazon day trade and had to retake it to make money in that today. But I was up in that initial trade and I just didn't get out. I flubbed the morning exit. I could have been done in five minutes today, but that was my, my thing. But anyways, the puts reversed. But if you're in them now, they look great. So I, I, I predicted the direction of the gap today I did not know it would not happen till three. So that's where when you know what you're looking at and you understand and you have conviction, it helps you hold a trade that might otherwise be down until it goes. Like for an example, an option or to allow you to retake a trade like Amazon and make money in it then into the close. In fact, I got a nice email from Jackie who's in the room. She did the Amazon trade late in the day. She did it. And, 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 and had a nice profit. She said, I had conviction just like you and she did it. So conviction is very important when you're doing different things all the time, changing what you're doing. When you don't understand why I'm calling trades, I think this has been your problem, Bob, uh, boom, boom. You don't even know why I'm doing this thing. So if, if I call a trade and, and an, an option, if I call a put in the market and it goes against you, you're like, ee, and you kill it, because everybody on TV is saying, go long, go long, and then, and then it goes, and then you lose in the, lose in the trade because you killed it. Then it goes on to work, and you're not in it. Then you don't get the money when it goes, and you have no idea why I even called it in the first place. And that's the benefit of taking the class. You know, again, I left the newsletter for the options open to anyone that wants to take it. But the, the benefit of doing the class is you understand what I'm doing. You understand what I'm doing? You understand why I'm doing it. And it's called conviction and that it helps you. It helps you stay with the train because sometimes things don't happen exactly when I want them to. That's exactly the point, Steve. And that's exactly why people are getting tripped up in this market. Nothing is happening when people want it to. The rally in 20, think about this. The rally in 2022 didn't happen when people wanted to. So, okay, fine. People love to go long. And this is just a general statement that I'm making that's 100% true, that most retail traders prefer to go long, don't know how to short, and prefer to go long, and they always will. As long as time exists and the market exists, people will always prefer to go long. They love the idea of the market going long. And many money managers, again, get paid to invest money for people. So they're not going to tell people the market's lower because then they're not going to give money to invest. So it's a whole thing where this buy low, sell high is something people can wrap their head around. But that's why if you learn how to short, if you actually learn how to do it as well as me, you will have an edge in the market as an active, active trader. But actually, I think this gives me as an edge as someone looking to invest long term. I'm, I'm in cash in my IRA. And I double, triple checked myself in January. Did I miss 
get him in. And then I said, no, I didn't. Because if I get the confirmation, I'll go long and we'll fly over the high. So then I said, no, wait, 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 wait. I'm glad I waited. I'm glad I waited. So, you know, the reality is that, again, for what we're doing for fast trades, you shouldn't be worried about buying low and selling high and predicting all these long-term moves. You were trying to capture the momentum and there's nothing wrong with shorting. And actually, if you learn how to short, you'll get the benefit of being able to make fast money. You will understand things far, far above what many, many retail traders that are trading the market understand. The concepts that I teach in the class are advanced concepts. I personally don't think they're hard to, to grasp. I, I, I'm a good teacher, I think. I don't know, some of you can say. But predicting the time element, element of it is tricky. Yes, I get it right a lot. I don't always get it right all the time. And unfortunately, if you are a person that has an account, you know, like me, I, you know, I'm not like everybody has to put a stop in, you know. So if I was just like buying the market and just saying, woo, whatever, or shorting the market and just saying, let it ride, like on, on cash, we wouldn't have to worry about timing. We wouldn't have to worry about timing of options. We wouldn't have to worry about trading on four to one margin in a day trade where we have to exit the trade by four. I mean, none of those things would apply, but everybody has certain parameters that they have to work within with their account, with their cash, every single person. So you must size yourself accordingly. You must put in stops. You have to money manage yourself. And yes, that means that you have to get the timing as good as you can possibly get it or as close as you can possibly get it. But we do stop and trade sometimes that go into work that go into work. And sometimes I retake them like Amazon, and sometimes I don't. If I looked at the odds of the odds of my trading as far as percentage of wins, and I never had to worry about timing in an option for an expiration date, it's probably over 90%. But that isn't reality. That isn't reality. Because if you're going to go long a stock or short a stock, you really should be all cash, not even two to one overnight margin. Because in this type of market, you just don't know what you're dealing with. It's just too sideways and choppy. And you have to have a lot of cash to do that. Like, like when I say a lot, I mean several million dollars to play with, to trade like that. Any other questions? Something else I was going to say. So we looked at the shop. Oops. The shop fell today too. So this was another watch today. We did a late trade in the shop. It went, it just kind of ran out of day here. But this was another nice short here as well. So again, getting back to what I was saying, there's a benefit to shorting if you learn how to short because a lot of people don't know how to do it. Whether you want to go long or short, I think momentum trading is the ticket. I make the determination what I'm doing and making the pick using my rating system. That's what I teach in the class, but it's all based on the gap. A hundred percent, a million percent. When I'm looking at it, and look at this here now, this is under 98. Look at this. Woo. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? I think this was a good discussion. It was a free for all discussion. I may do this again at some point. I'm just trying to open up some people's minds so they can understand and look at things a little bit differently. And I know some of you are thinking about taking the class for some time, a long time, and you don't understand what I do. You're not going to understand what I do until you take the class. That's the bottom line. But I know that people are getting chopped up in this market in 2022, and people may have thought that 2023 was going to be an easy year. No. And if you don't believe me by now, you will probably in the next couple of days. So every time you think something's going to happen in the time that you think it's going to, it doesn't. And this is not a bias of, to the downside because, again, the market may recover this year. I'm not saying we don't recover. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that whatever you think is going to happen, you better know what you're doing it and why you're doing it because the reality is that we've been in a chop, okay? So trading momentum is the only way you're going to make any money. Otherwise, you're scalping for pennies, and that's not going to cover the losses. And then after you do cover the losses, if you're even up, you're not going to be up that much. And it makes it very, very difficult then to do this and like to feel good about doing it. You know, we, we want to feel like our time is well spent. Like, 
if I connected with somebody here in the last hour, my time speaking here for 60 minutes was well spent. Otherwise I could have been unpacking. I just, I moved four months ago. I'm still not unpacked in my apartment. So, you know, when you get up in the morning, if you want to trade, if you're losing, that is not time well spent. I teach a class. It's on a weekend. It's a, it's nine to five. It's the whole weekend, but it's time well spent where you're going to really learn something. You're investing in your future when you come, not just the cost of the class, but the time. And for me, it's my time is better spent, even though I took that late trade today. My time is better spent doing the fast trades in the first 30 minutes, the first hour. That's where I can get the most bang for my buck. That's where I can plop on the size and get most of the momentum that I want to squeeze out of a stock of the market in that first beginning period. Tomorrow is probably going to be just like that. There'll be no exception for that either tomorrow, I'm sure. So it's look at your time and look at your time and say, this is really worth my time to do this and, and, and the money. So many people trade for years, years of their life, and they're not getting anywhere with trading. They're not making money, they're losing, or they're break even, or they're not making money, and they're just spending hours of their lives. Like, it's just like a pointless endeavor. Look at your life as something important in the time you're spending doing things that you're gonna get something out of it that's gonna benefit you, for real. Any last minute questions here by anyone at all? I think this was a good discussion. Some of you I will see tomorrow morning. I don't know where we open tomorrow. Be great if Amazon was down huge. If you have any last minute questions, you can email me at melissa at the stock .com. Andrew, did you ever talk to that broker? My email is melissa at the stock .com. Boom, boom. I hope you take the class. I hope you take the class. You've been following me forever. Follow up with that guy, Andrew, so you can check out more information. Thanks for the presentation. Good job. Rick, I will see you. All right, have a great night, everyone. You're welcome.